Okay, today we'll talk about printing to the screen, and we'll talk specifically about two methods, print and print lin. Now, in order to print to the screen, we need an object, a method, and an argument. The object we'll use is system.out, that's a capital S, and if this object, system.out, comes with a Java language, so we don't have to do anything special to use it. Just type in system.out. Remember, that's a capital S. All right, the methods we'll talk about are print and println. That's P-R-I-N-T and then P-R-I-N-T-L-N. The arguments we can use, well, there are a number of arguments, any configuration you want to put together. And those arguments can be anything from an empty argument list that you see at the very beginning of this list, a specific number, a number that is the result of a calculation, as in 7 times 3, a variable or a constant, Java will go and find the values in that namespace and um, print it to the screen. I can send a, a string, as I do here when, with hello world. I can send the value re that is returned when I call a method, as I do with hello.pow23. That'll return the value of 2 raised to the third. Or I can send a concatenated string, uh, as I do here with hello world, or I can concatenate anything. I could concatenate hello, the number five, and then the string world. So anything that I can put together in any of these, in any configuration, as long as it results in something that my compiler can understand and therefore print, I'm okay. All right, the first method is print. It prints the argument passed and then the cursor remains on the same line. Um, a line that will use as the print method would be system.out.print, and then I pass my argument within those parentheses, and of course I have a semicolon at the end. Uh, this is an executable line of code. Second method, println. It again prints the argument passed, but the cursor in this method moves to the side of the next line after it finishes printing whatever's passed to it, that is its argument. So I call this method with system.out.println and pass an argument, again within parentheses, and I have a semicolon at the end of the line. Now, when you do use either print or println and you pass a string, don't make the mistake of breaking the argument, the string passed, um, in, within the quotation marks. This will result in the compiler error. So you see in this first line of code, I've got a valid line of code, system.out.println, and I'm passing as an argument, print this string. The second line of code, I have, I want to print to the screen, print this string to the screen for me. But I, in typing it in, I, I maybe I found that it was too long as I was using my IDE and I couldn't see the whole argument on my screen. And so I pressed the return key after the word for. And so I put the command on two lines, breaking the string, that is my argument, within the quotation marks. This will yield a compiler error. I can't break a string within those quotation marks. My solution is, if I want to print to a single line, print this string to the screen for me, is to first have the command system.out.print and pass, in this case, print this string to. I'm just passing that as an argument. I then have a second command uh, to the compiler, and that is system.out.println. And I pass as an argument the screen to for me. Now, my compiler is going to look at the first line, print out, print this string to, stay on that same line because you'll note that it's I'm calling the print method, and then I'll have the execution of the second line of code, and that will print the words, the screen for me, immediately after the to of print this string to, and then my cursor will go to the next line. So I will have, with the execution of these two lines, printed to the screen on a single line, print this str string to the screen for me. All right, I have escape characters to help me deal with special situations. Let's say I want to print to the screen a string that said, that reads, I said hello to him, and I want the word hello to be in quotation marks. My compiler is going to look at that argument passed, and as it parses through it, it will see that second quotation, quotation mark, the one just before the H of hello, and it will interpret that as the end of the string that is I said and it won't know what to do with what's on the rest of the line. I'll have a compilation error here. 
The solution is the escape character, and the escape character is a backslash. If I put a backslash in front of a quotation mark, my compiler will see the quotation mark as just what it is, a quotation mark, just a character to be printed to the screen. So here in my example, if I want printed to the screen, I said hello, and hello within quotation marks to him, I will put a backslash in front of the quotation mark that comes before the H, and a backslash before the quotation mark that comes after the O. And so while I will have printed to the screen, I said hello, and the hello in, per, in quotation marks, to him. I have additional escape characters. We've seen the double quotation mark. We ha I have one that it's the end for the new line, takes my cursor to the next line. Backslash T, that's the tab, moves the cursor over a number of spaces. The backslash B, that's for the backspace. It'll take me back one character, or one space. The backslash R is a character return, carriage return. It'll take me back to the beginning of that line. A single quote will just print out a single quote. And then I have the backslash, and that will print out a backslash. So some examples of those um, escape characters. If I wanted to print out the word day, tab over and print out date, I have an example of that in my first line. Here I have a low and then go to the next line, print out there. I have one, two, three, and then I back up one space. I have hello, and I go, I take my character turn back to the beginning of the line. If I wanted to print out a single quotation mark, I'd put the backslash in front of it in my next to last example. And then in my very last, if I wanted to just to print out a backslash, I would put a backslash in front of it. And so I would print out in that last line, a backslash looks like this, and it would print out a backslash. Now in conclusion, when we want to print to the screen, we'll need an object, a method, and an argument. And the two methods that we looked at are print and println. Print prints whatever is passed to it to the screen, stays on that same, keeps the cursor on that same line. Println, again, prints what is passed to it, but then takes the cursor to the beginning of the next line.